Everybody in the land knew it. This was the most famous girl in the whole land. This was the most learned girl in the whole land. This was the most virtuous girl in the whole land. This Jewish girl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually allowed them to enter into the Holy Land after 40 years. And Dawood alayhi salam establishes the state of Israel, the first Islamic state. And establishes Jerusalem as the capital of the first Islamic state. And he is succeeded by his son Suleiman, Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. And he builds the masjid in the capital city of the Islamic State. And when you read the story in the Quran of Suleiman alayhi salam and the Queen of Sheba, read between the lines and you'll see in that story the recognition of the state of Israel as the ruling state in the world. And the definition of a ruling state is that it can impose its will on any rival. And so this is the golden age, the golden age of Banu Israel, the time of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. But after the death of Suleiman alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prohibited riba in the Torah. They changed the Torah. They rewrote it. The Torah now says, you can find it, go look in it, you'll find it still there. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. Rabbi, can you tell me why? Answer, don't rip off your own brother. That's why. Right. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. But it is halal, he can lend money on interest to those who are not Jews. It's called double standards. Because of this change they've made in the Torah concerning riba, among other things, they have now violated the condition of righteous conduct. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this. In Surah to Bani Israel, he refers to this as fasad. Fasad is corruption. This is the corruption of the word of Allah. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعَلُنَّ عُلُوًا كَبِيرًا That we recorded it in the Torah, in the Zabur, in the Torah, that Banu Israel will commit fasad in the land, yani al-Ardul Muqaddasa, in the Holy Land, on two occasions. This is the first one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to it by sending an army from Babylon, an army that worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars, and idols. So these ibad are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they destroy the state of Israel. And they destroy the masjid. And they take Banu Israel into slavery in Babylon. And so now they're, they're weeping by the rivers of Babylon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet, Isaiah. He sends many other prophets, but this one in particular, to communicate a divine promise. What is the promise? We were told about a divine promise. 
which was communicated to the Israelite people. That Allah was going to send a prophet who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah, and who would rule the world with justice, confirmed by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he would be Hakimun Adil. He would rule the world with justice. From the throne of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam, the Prophet David, and with a rule which would be eternal. But when that promise was communicated, the Israelites were out there in Babylon and the Holy Land was occupied. The Israelite people understood that if the Messiah was to fulfill this divine promise, there were certain logical implications which followed. Number one, that he would have to liberate the Holy Land. Number two, that he would have to bring the believers back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Number three, that he would have to restore the Holy State of Israel, founded by David and Solomon, Allah's blessings be upon them. And number four, that this holy state of Israel would have to become once again the ruling state in the world. And then the Messiah could rule the world from the throne of David, alayhi salam, with a rule which would be eternal. After almost a hundred years in Babylon, suddenly things began to happen and the Holy Land was liberated. The Persian Empire defeated Babylon. And the Israelite people were allowed to return to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own and to restore the Holy State of Israel. And the temple or the masjid built by Solomon alayhi salam was rebuilt. And so the Israelite people are now excited. The excitement has reached fever pitch. The Messiah must be around the corner. The golden age is coming back. We're going to rule the world one more time. And sure enough, the Messiah came. But when the Messiah arrived, the son of Mary, while some of them accepted him, the young ones, the poor, the humble, the innocent, فَآمَنَ طَائِفَةُ مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلٍ the establishment, the rabbis, the priests, rejected him. Why did they reject the Messiah? Answer, because Allah tested them. And because they were seeing with only one eye, they failed the test. They said, They said, that his mother had committed that enormous sin. And they said that this baby was a bastard. If they had seen with two eyes, with the internal eye, then they would have known, oh no, appearance and reality were completely opposite each other with this baby that she, she was still a virgin 
she gave birth to the baby. But they did not see with the internal eye. But if you see with two eyes, which are the two? The external and the internal. Then they would have said, wait a minute. Nobody knew that she was pregnant. Huh? Nobody knew she was pregnant. And from the time she was age two until the age of puberty, she lived in the temple. And she had the chief rabbi himself as her guardian, Zachariah, alayhi salam. And our chief rabbi himself told us of the miracle. The mihrab in those days was not a niche in the wall. The mihrab was an inner room called the Holy of the Holies. And in that inner room, only the sacred relics were kept. And only the chief rabbi could enter that room, nobody else. Because she was under his guardianship, she was allowed into it, enter into the mihrab. Nobody else. When the old man went in into the mihrab one day, he saw her with food. He said, Maryam, anna lucky have. Maryam, where did you get this food? She said, I asked, and he sent it. She asked, and he sent it. And I want a son. I better ask too. <laughs> huh? And then, of course, you know the story. He went in into the mihrab now by himself, all alone, nobody with him, and he asked. And the angel came and says, Allah has accepted. Accepted your son, your dua. And you're going to have a son, and Allah even gave him a name already. What's his name? Yahya. So the, the whole world knew, knew this story. Everybody in the land knew it. This was the most famous girl in the whole land. This was the most learned girl in the whole land. This was the most virtuous girl in the whole land. This Jewish girl the greatest woman who has ever walked the face of the earth, that is Maryam, the daughter of Imran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Maryam, O Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen. O Maryam, Allah has chosen you, Allah has purified you, and Allah has chosen you over all of the women of the world. What makes Maryam so special, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she's an example for those who believe, wa Maryam abnata Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not associate Maryam with Isa alayhi salam in every ayah of the Qur'an. He doesn't say Maryam, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. He just says Maryam ibn Atu Imran. That Maryam's greatness is not necessarily tied to Isa alayhi salam. She was great because of who she was. And in fact, her name is even mentioned more than the name of Isa alayhi salam in the Qur'an because of how great she was. She's not just a woman who's great because she happened to be the mother of a prophet. She's recognized as a woman who perfected her faith as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned her. She's a woman who demonstrates for all of us how to really have to in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to truly trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our most difficult times. She's an example of modesty. She's an example in her devotion to her ibadah, her worship. I mean, all of these things Maryam alayhi salam excels in. So it's not just that she's the mother of Isa alayhi salam. And her story starts off with ibadah. Uh, and she was dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before she was born. She grew up and this young girl loved to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, she craved it. This woman ate, you know, breathed, drank uh, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even as she was a young girl. And so Zakaria Islam would come, find her in ibadah, find her worshiping Allah all the time. And no one knew she was pregnant. She had left the town before her pregnancy could be observed. Okay, she's around the age of 16 years old. She has to deliver a child by herself in a society where if you smell like adultery, okay, if you've been accused of adultery in any way, you're going to be stoned, you're going to be tortured. But this woman, subhanAllah, she goes and she, 
She hides from society. So Maryam Islam, the 16 year old girl is delivering this baby by herself. And she said, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyan mansiya. I wish I would have died before this and been completely forgotten. SubhanAllah, I wish I never existed because the shame that she's going to be put through, the, the, you know, she's, she's probably going to be stoned. The baby is going to be stoned. You know, all that she's going to go through. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to Maryam alayhi salam. And actually, Jibreel, through Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam, whenever she says, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyan mansiya, Jibreel alayhi salam responds to her, Alla tahzani qad ja'ala rabbuki tahta kisariya. Don't grieve, don't grieve, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a river beneath you. And, and Jabir alayhi salam says, وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِدْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطُ عَلَيْكِ رُطَبًا جَنِيًّا And go ahead and shake that palm tree. And fresh ripe dates will fall upon you. After she's given birth, she's tired, fatigued, weak. And Jabir alayhi salam first tells her, أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي Don't grieve. Your mother said that you're just a girl. Right? You are saying that you wish you never existed. Allah is going to make you a legend for all men and for all women. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem that Maryam is not just from Al-Qanitat, the devout women. Maryam is from the devout men and women. She holds her own. She has a special rank amongst all men and all women. So your mother was wrong and you were wrong. Don't grieve. And Allah is with you. When the baby was born, if she had committed that vile deed, then what she should have done was to try to conceal her sin. Maybe take the baby, put it in front of somebody's front door, knock on the door and run away. Huh? In New York, of course, they do something else, throw it in the garbage bin. But she didn't do that. She didn't do it. She came back with the baby. So Allah says, Atat bihi You know, she went to her people carrying the baby. She came back with the baby in front of her, not behind her. She came through the front road, not through the back road. She came in the daylight, not in the night time. She knew who the baby was because the angel told her, This is the Messiah. And she knew that this is a test, so she has to be silent. So when they questioned her, Mary, how could you do this thing? Your father and mother were not like this. She only pointed to the baby. Mary, babies don't talk. But this time the baby talked. And when the baby declared that I am the messenger of Allah, they responded and they said, Hada sikharum mubi. A plain magic. <coughs> and today's lecture reminds the speaker and the audience that unless we see with the internal eye, we will be deceived in so many different ways.